after we finished intracellular accumulation, we said that one of the intracellular accumulation is the pigments, and this is the lecture of pigmentation. By the end of this lecture, you should be able to classify these types of pigments, explain the pathogenesis of abnormal deposition of different pigments, describe the morphological features secondary to this deposition, and explain the consequences of such deposition. Notice the colors and explain the difference. Look at this. We have black colored uh, person and a white colored person. So they are different in their uh, skin color due to pigment difference. Here we have another pigment. And this, that in this color, natural skin color, okay, this case, we have endogenous pigment. This is secreted from our melanocytes, while in case of tattoo, this is an exogenous pigment introduced to the body from outside.
So what are the pigments? These are colored substances, some of which are a normal constituents of the cells. For example, we have melanin, whereas others are abnormal and accumulate in cells only under special circumstances. These pigments may be endogenous. These are formed within our body from our cells. For example, we have melanin. We have hemoprotein-derived pigments present in the hemoglobin. And we have lipophosphine pigment. We have exogenous pigments coming from outside our body. For example, inhaled carbon in the case of cold anthracosis, where we have injected as tattoo or even we have ingestion as in case of carotene. Melanin, this is an endogenous brown-black pigment present in the hair, skin, choroid of the eye, meninges, and adrenal medulla. In the skin, this, melan this is the melanin pigment that is brown in color. It is formed by the melanocytes. Look at these. These are the melanocytes here. And these melanocytes are not covering the whole skin and so they inject the melanin inside the adjacent keratinocytes and so we have the keratinocytes here containing pigment basal keratinocytes and we have the melanocytes so apart from melanocytes melanin accumulation can be seen in adjacent keratinocytes in the skin and in dermal macrophages look here you can have the dermal 
macrophages containing melanin. This melanin helps us to form a screen against ultraviolet irradiation. So it is protective against ultraviolet irradiation. The melanin is produced from tyrosine by the effect of tyrosinase enzyme and this leads to formation of DOBA which is dihydroxyphenylalanine. This is transformed then to melanin. So melanin is formed from tyrosine in two steps. The first step is by tyrosinase enzyme forming DOPA and this DOPA is transformed into melanin within the melanocytes. Disorders of melanin pigmentation consist of hypopigmentation and hyperpigmentation. Hypopigmentation means that there is less melanin than normal. And this hypopigmentation may be generalized affecting different parts of the body or may be localized in certain areas. Hyperpigmentation is the opposite, increase in melanin pigment. And this may be again generalized or localized. This girl has normal melanin or little melanin or no melanin at all. Okay, this girl has no melanin. This is the case of albino or albinism. And this is a form of generalized hypopigmentation. And this is due to genetic defect in tyrosinase activity. Remember, tyrosinase is the enzyme responsible for transformation of tyrosine into DOPA, which will be transformed into melanin. If I have genetic defect in tyrosinase activity, so I'm not going to have melanin, and this is the albinism, albin.
localized hypopigmentation we have localized areas of hypopigmentation for example in this condition that is called vitiligo اللي هو اسمه ايه البهاق and in vitiligo you have completely normal skin just it loses its color so we have completely normal skin with no abrasions no thickening no uh, scales nothing at all totally normal skin apart from the loss of the color this is the vitiligo or el buhaq and usually vitiligo is mediated by some immune mechanism that destroys melanocytes in these areas in which we have loss of melanin pigmentation fine the other kind here of localized hypopigmentation is uh, in case of destruction of melanocytes in cases of wound healing after burn for, for example after burn and then we have healing of this burn so in this healing i lost a lot of melanocytes and the regenerated epithelium didn't contain melanocytes and so the area of the burn the scar of the burn is, is devoid of melanin pigment and so it is hypopigmented in cases of leprosy what happens in leprosy this is a disease mediated by a bacillus called lepra bacilli it is a microorganism microbe and this microbe goes and destroys the nerves and destroys the melanocytes and so with this destruction i will have loss of melanocytes in the areas affected by leprosy so i have localized hypopigmentation in cases of vitiligo which is the uh, 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 normal skin uh, hyperpigmentation هو العكس hyperpigmentation means increased melanin pigment and this hyperpigmentation may be localized and may be generalized localized hyperpigmentation may be in the form of freckles اللي هو ايه الفريكلز ده اللي هو النمش so freckles اللي هو اللي موجود هنا ده this is a form of localized hyperpigmentation وهنا يا دوب الميلانوسايتس بتحوش ميلانين زيادة شوية the other cause is pigmented melanocytic nevi اللي هي الحسنة look at this these are the nevi اللي هي الحسنة ودولت بيبقى لونهم uh, brown in color وبيبقوا localized hyperpigmentation وبيبقى هو collection of uh, melanocytes كتيرة شوية كده يعني ناس بيقولوا عليها هامرتوما هنعرفها بعدين في تيومرز وناس تانية بتقول عليها benign tumor المهم ان هي فيها collection of benign melanocytes and these melanocytes contain a lot of melanin giving this appearance that is localized hyperpigmentation العكس بقى من الميلانوسايتس دولت لما يبتدوا يتجننوا ويعملوا لي مالجنت نيوبلازم مالجنت تيومر والمالجنت تيومر ده بيبقى الميلانوسايتس هنا برضو بتفرز ميلانين وبتسكريت ميلانين فبتبقى خلايا ملونة وبالتالي بتعمل لي تيومر هنا this tumor is called malignant melanoma malignant عشان هو سرطاني melanoma عشان طالع من الميلانوسايتس so malignant melanoma is a malignant tumor derived from melanocytes in which I have localized tumor in the skin here that is dark uh, brown or black in color لما اجي ابص عليه تحت الميكروسكوب لما اخد قطاع الاقي malignant cells I find these malignant cells and they are uh, Generalized hyperpigmentation means that you have hyperpigmentation in many sites in the body. In cases of pregnancy, some pregnant females have what? They have the melanocytes having receptors for hormones on their surface. And so these melanocytes have hormonal receptors for estrogen and progesterone on their surface. With the excess of these hormones during pregnancy, so they go and stimulate melanocytes to produce a lot of melanin and this will lead to this will lead to hyperpigmentation in different areas of the skin including the face like this over the nose over the cheeks 
here in the nose above and uh, the chin and here the chin and even in the body in the uh, abdomen in the limbs and so on this is called what this is called cloasma of pregnancy so cloasma of pregnancy is a form of generalized hyperpigmentation occurring in pregnant females due to overstimulation of melanocytes by hormones of pregnancy in the form of estrogen and progesterone the other form of generalized hyperpigmentation occurs in Addison's disease. Remember, what's Addison's disease? This is suprarenal failure. So, suprarenal gland failure due to complete destruction by any cause will lead to loss of hormones secreted from this gland. This gland secretes a corticosteroid, cortisone, and so on. And this cortisone goes and inhibit the secretion of adrenocortical trophic hormone from the pituitary gland. So, in cases of damaged suprarenal glands by any cause, I have no hormones, I have no corticosteroids. This is for melanin. We talked about the local uh, hypo and hyperpigmentation and the generalized hypo and hyperpigmentation. The second form of endogenous pigment is the hemoprotein-derived pigment, which is a catabolic product of hemoglobin. Do you remember the products of hemoglobin, hemoglobin catabolism? Hemoglobin is catabolized into heme and globin. Heme and globin. The globin is the protein part. This is the amino acids, and the amino acids go to uh, uh, join the plasma pl protein pool. What about the heme? This heme is formed of two parts, porphyrin and ferrous ion. So it is further catabolized into two parts, iron and iron-free iron part. So it is catabolized into iron, it's the ferrous iron, and iron-free part. The iron is stored as ferritin. The iron-free part is transformed into bilirubin that is secreted in bile. Remember the hemoglobin catabolic products. We have bilirubin, which is the iron free part secreted in bile. We have iron that is stored as ferritin, and we have the globin amino acids, which go and join the plasma protein pool. If I have excess destruction of red blood cells, as in cases of hemorrhage as bruise, اللي هو أماكن ال ال البروز اللي هو أماكن ال الخبطات فيبتدي يحصل عندي البروز ده. Look at this bruise. مع الوقت اللون بتاعه بيتغير. I have change in the color of this bruise. Okay, اللي هي الكدمات. يبقى الكدمات بتبدأ لونها أحمر. وبعدين يبتدي لونها يتغير يزرق أو يخضر ويصفر لغاية ما تختفي خالص يبقى الـ الـ size of hemorrhage زي الكدمات اللي هي البروز starts with red, red blue hemoglobin and then I have varying shades of green blue biliverdin اللي هو green bile and bilirubin اللي هو red bile from the heme moiety and the iron ions of hemoglobin accumulate as golden yellow hemozedrin يبقى الـ الـ في الآخر بيبتدي اللي هو الالوان اللي موجوده دي بتبقى في صوره الجرين بايل اللي هو البليفردن وبعدين الريد بايل اللي هو البيليروبن فروم هيم مويتي والايرن بيتحول في الاخر الى الفرتين ويتجمع في صوره الفرتين يتجمع في صوره الهيموزادرين اللي بيديني الجولدن يلو كلر سو ذا جولدن يلو كلر هنا ده عباره عن الهيم الهيموزادرين
hemoprotein derived pigments iron that is derived from the hemoprotein hemoglobin catabolic product is stored in the tissues in two forms ferritin and hemozedrin what is the difference between both ferritin is iron complexed to aboferritin protein and it is a soluble form okay it is stored but it is soluble it's not seen by light microscope seen only by the electron microscope but if i have excessive amounts or aggregates of ferritin they, that are degraded and insoluble we are going to start to see them by the light microscope as a granular a brown pigment golden yellow brown granular pigment that is present within the macrophages in this case you can see the macrophages they are granular they have granular brown cytoplasm like that so this is the hemocytr although hemocytrin accumulation is usually pathologic لان احنا اتفقنا ان بعد ما يحصل الكاتابوليزم of hemoglobin usually the iron is uh, stored in the form of ferritin امال ايه اللي بيحول الهيموزادرين لما يكون كميات كبيره يبقى الكميات الكبيره عاده بتبقى باثولوجيك انما في small amounts of this pigment are normally present in the mononuclear phagocytic cells of bone marrow spleen and liver الاماكن اللي اصلا بيحصل فيها red cell breakdown يبقى الاماكن اللي بيحصل فيها red cell breakdown the sites where normally red cells are broken down as bone marrow spleen and liver i have small amounts of hemozadrin accumulated within the mononuclear phagocytic cells and these are actually stores for iron in these sites زي البون مارو in the bone marrow I'm going to new form uh, or form new RBCs and so I need iron to form these new RBCs so the hemozadrin present in these macrophages will help me as a source for this iron okay while excessive storage of hemozadrin will occur in situations where there is increased breakdown of RBCs or systemic overload of iron if, uh, uh, normally بيكون عندي في كميات بسيطة من الهيموزادرين موجودة في الفاجوسيتك سيلز في البوم مارو في السبلين والليفر إنما لما يزيد الهيموزادرين أكيموليشن عن حده زي في حالات اللي بيكسر فيها ريد بلاس سيلز بكميات كبيرة أو بيبقى عندي overload of uh, systemic iron يبقى في الحالة دي يبتدي يبقى عندي كميات أكبر من الهيموزادرين تبقى أكيموليتد في أماكن أخرى يبقى الـ excessive storage of hemozadrin will occur in situations when there is increased breakdown of RBCs or systemic overload of iron. Is there a special stain to confirm the hemozadrin deposit? It is brown in color. Who says that this brown in color pigment is hemozadrin? Go and do a special stain. The special stain for hemozadrin is the, the Prussian blue or pearl stain. The Prussian blue or pearl stain بيبتدي يصبغ لي ال brown pigment دي يحولها للون الأزرق. So this is the Prussian blue stain. ودي confirms the presence of the hemozadrin pigment. يأكد لي إن the pigment البني اللي أنا شايفة هدي هي عبارة عن the iron hemozadrin pigment.
hemozydrosis. Hemozydrosis is the condition in which there is the position of increased amounts of hemozydrin. So osis means increase in amount. And this increased amount of hemozydrin is deposited in mononuclear phagocytic cells. And this will spur the parenchymal cells. Wabitali, the parenchymal cells are not affected. And if the parenchymal cells are not affected, so there is no associated tissue damage. And so in hemozydrosis, there is no tissue damage. And this hemozydrin accumulation may be localized in certain sites or systemic in different organs. Okay? The localized hemozydrosis may occur in the sites of hemorrhage وده في مكان البروز نفسه or in the lung in case of chronic pulmonary venous congestion. This is the site of hemorrhage أو البروز زي ما شفنا قبل كده. ودلوقتي هنشرح pulmonary venous congestion. What is CVC of the lung? Chronic venous congestion of the lung or chronic pulmonary venous congestion. ده عبارة عن إيه؟ لما نيجي نرسم الناحية دي كده, we all know that the heart is formed of four chambers, left side and right side. Okay. We have left atrium, right atrium, left ventricle and right ventricle. And we all know, we all know that the lungs, okay, gives four pulmonary veins. Taking the oxygenated blood, this is the pulmonary vein, going to the left atrium, and we have the pulmonary artery coming from the right ventricle, carrying the deoxygenated blood, and we all know that oxygenation of the blood occurs here through the capillaries present in the interalveolar sept. Okay? If I have a problem in the left side of the heart, which means that I have some obstruction here in the mitral valve, as in case of mitral valve stenosis, stenosis of the mitral valve, mitral valve dia, or we have failure of the left ventricle to do its function, and the failure of the muscle of the left ventricle, this is called left ventricular failure, heart failure. What is going to happen? I'm going to have what? I'm going to have increased pressure inside the left atrium because I can just take the blood through this narrow uh, mitral valve or I have failure of the left ventricle so it doesn't go and do systole and diastole and I'm going to lose the negative pressure that uh, sucks the blood through the uh, left ventricle. And so the blood will accumulate in the left atrium. If I have the blood accumulating in the left atrium, okay, what happens here? Look at this picture. If I have here the blood accumulating in the left atrium, and this is the valve, narrow valve, or the failing ventricle, so the blood will accumulate in the left atrium. This will lead to increase pressure okay in the pulmonary veins and so the blood cannot go through these pulmonary veins from the lungs because i have increase in the pressure here يبقى عندي resistance في عندي resistance بتقاوم the passage of the blood and so i have engorgement of the veins by the blood and this engorgement of the veins by blood is called congestion يبقى كلمة congestion معناه ايه؟ هتاخدوها بعد كده في الهيموداينامكس. You are going to study congestion in hemodynamics and this means engorgement of the veins with the venous blood. And so the pulmonary veins are engorged with this venous blood and so there is resistance here to the passage of the blood from the capillaries present in the lungs to these pulmonary veins. Fine. So what happens at the level of these capillaries if we draw here the alveoli and here we have the capillaries here in the interalveolar septa we all know that these capillaries have thin walls to allow the passage of the gas for gases exchange and so i have what i have increase in the pressure inside these small 
capillaries. Why? Because there is resistance of passage of the blood from these capillaries to the pulmonary veins and back pressure. This will lead to increase in the pressure inside these capillaries. Why? Because they are engorged with the blood. And you know that the pressure is the pressure exerted from the blood present on the capillaries on their walls from inside like that. With this increase in pressure, these capillaries can be damaged or ruptured. And so I am going to have escape of the red blood cells outside these capillaries. So I'm going to have engorgement of these capillaries with blood. And with this increase inside uh, pressure inside these capillaries, some will rupture. And so there will be release of red blood cells. Okay, they will go inside the lung alveoli like that. So I'm going to have rupture of these capillaries, escape of red blood cells inside the lumen of the alveoli, and then the alveolar macrophages here will just go and phagocytose these red blood cells, and they will store hemozedrin in large amounts in their cytoplasm. And so I'm going to have a lot of hemozedrin laden macrophages present here inside the lung alveoli and these hemozedrin laden macrophages are called heart failure cells. Why? Because one of the conditions that leads to th uh, their appearance is the failure of the left side of the heart, left ventricular failure, and so they call these uh, hemozedrin laden macrophages heart failure cells. Heart failure cells. So this is the picture of chronic venous congestion of the lungs. Of course, this will lead to what? This will lead to marked enlargement of the lungs, and they are filled with this, engorged with blood, so they are heavy, and they will be brownish in color due to accumulation of a lot of hemozedrin. If we look at the microscopic picture of the lung alveoli, look here we have these congested interalveolar septal capillaries here, and here the lumina of the uh, alveoli are filled with these brown cells. These brown cells are hemozedrin laden macrophages, which are called the heart failure cells. So brown in duration of the lung, which means this uh, hardening of the lung and brown color of the lung. This in case of chronic pulmonary venous congestion, I have small hemorrhages and escape of red blood cells in the alveolar space due to the rupture of the capillaries in the interalveolar septa. Hemolysis or breakdown of red blood cells will occur inside the uh, alveoli with the position of hemozedrin in the alveolar macrophages uh, that occurs in the left side heart failure and so they call these cells heart failure cells. We summo al khalaya dola heart failure cells عشان كده. So localized hemozedrosis occurs in the sites of hemorrhage زي البروز اللي شفناه. And occurs in cases of pulmonary venous congestion in the lungs. في نفس الوقت, we can have systemic hemozydrosis in which hemozydrin accumulation inside macrophages occurs in different organs. وده بقى يحصل بسبب إيه؟ إن يكون عندي يا إما الأيرن اللي داخل الجسم داخل بكميات كبيرة قوي من برا زي increased iron intake or absorption. Or I have increased iron production from inside our body by breakdown of red blood cells. So I have increased hemolysis or breakdown of red blood cells, as in cases of hemolytic anemias. وده هيب a source لي ال iron من جوا الجسم بكميات كبيرة. يبقى ال iron بيجيلي يا إما من برا الجسم يا إما من جوا الجسم بكميات كبيرة. من برا الجسم from outside the iron comes from increased intake or absorption. From inside the body, iron comes from increased hemolysis of red blood cells. Let's solve this activity. Excessive systemic storage of hemozedrin can occur in which of the following types of anemia? In iron deficiency anemia or in thalassemia? Both types are anemia, but in thalassemia, it is a chronic hemolytic anemia in which there is increased RBC's hemolysis or breakdown. So, hemozydrosis will occur in which of the following? Of course, in thalassemia, because of excessive RBC breakdown, 
with excessive iron production and hemosiderin deposition in the macrophages leading to systemic hemozydrosis. Hemochromatosis is another terminology that is related somehow to hemozydrosis. It is the progressive and more extensive accumulation of hemozydrin, but in this case, it accumulates also in parenchymal cells plus the mononuclear phagocytic cells leading to tissue injury, and we are going to see the mechanism of this tissue injury. The organs affected by hemochromatosis are all organs, especially liver, pancreas, heart, endocrine glands. Look at this figure. Remember, this was one of the figures that we have seen in uh, uh, biochemical changes of cell injury. Remember, the re reactive oxygen species and the relation to cell injury. Look at this part. Here we have what is called Fenton reaction. And in this Fenton reaction, I have non-enzymatic uh, combination of H2O2 with heavy metals like uh, iron or copper, leading to release of hydroxyl radical, which will lead to tissue injury. And so the mechanism of tissue injury in cases of hemochromatosis is related to reactive oxygen speeches. So it is reactive oxygen speeches mediated injury. The types of hemochromatosis, we have two types of hemochromatosis, both of course are systemic no localized forms. The first type is called primary or hereditary hemochromatosis. And in this case, we have an autosomal dominant disease characterized by excessive intestinal absorption of iron. So iron is absorbed in large amounts in the intestine. Okay, and it is characterized by early, early manifestations of hemochromatosis and tissue injury in the liver. Tissue injury will end in liver cirrhosis, the deposition in the pancreas will lead to destruction of the islets of the pancreas leading to diabetes mellitus. Sucker, bronze color of the skin is due to deposition of hemozydrin and melanin excessively in the skin leading to bronze color of the skin. So the patient has in young age liver cirrhosis, diabetes mellitus, and bronze color of the skin. And so they call this type of diabetes bronze diabetes. So bronze diabetes is related to primary or hereditary hemochromatosis. The secondary form of hemochromatosis is the acquired type. And this is just a long-term systemic hemozydrosis that shifts to hemochromatosis as in cases of hemolytic anemia with recurrent blood transfusions leading to excess iron coming from destroyed RBCs leading to iron overload and hemozydrosis that will exceed the ability of the phagocytic cells to contain this hemozydrin and so parenchymal cells will be affected and so this is just a shift from hem systemic hemozydrosis to secondary form of hemochromatosis. So the types of hemochromatosis are primary and secondary hemochromatosis, both are systemic of course. Lipophosphin pigment or wear and tear pigment is the last endogenous pigment we are going to explain today. Lipophosphin is an insoluble yellow-brown granular intracellular lipid pigment. So it is an intracellular yellow-brown. Maybe you have a color. Okay. It's a yellow-brown pigment derived from lipids okay found in process of atrophy or aging and in wasting diseases the affected tissues are heart liver testes and brain neurons lipophosphin is composed of lipids okay 
This lipid comes from where? This comes from the subcellular membranes. What's meant by subcellular membrane? Membrane of mitochondria, membrane of rough endoplasmic reticulum. This is called a subcellular membrane. If any of these organelles is, phagos uh, is eaten, if any of these organelles is eaten by the process of autophagy by lysosomes, so it will be digested by these lysosomes. And this occurs in the process of atrophy, if you remember. And in these lysosomes, we have free radicals present within the lysosomal matrix. These free radicals will go and peroxidase. They are going to oxidize the membranes of the phospholipids present in these membranes. And then this peroxidation would lead to formation of this lipophosphin which is indigestible and stays in lysosomes. So it is composed of lipid that derive from the free radical injury or catalyzed peroxidation of the lipids of subcellular membranes and they stay in the lysosomes in indigestible form. If you look at this figure, here we have the heterophagy and the autophagy. Heterophagy means phagocytosis, eating something from outside. Autophagy means that you eat old uh, mitochondria, for example, like this one. This is an old mitochondria that is eaten by the lysosomes. After this, it digests the contents, including the phospholipids present in the uh, uh, membrane of the mitochondria, and this will lead to formation of uh, uh, this peroxidation product, which is the lipophosphin pigment that is indigestible and stays in the lysosomes like that. And so it stains uh, whenever you have more and more uh, damage of uh, more old mitochondria, old organelles, you have more and more lysosomes filled with this lipophosphin pigment. And so they call it wear and tear pigment. Lipophosphin doesn't cause cell injury. They just represent uh, the age of the cell and the harm the cell is exposed to. Grossly, I have the condition in the heart is, uh, leading to atrophy of the heart with brown color of the muscle of the heart. So they call it brown atrophy. So then I have a case of atrophy uh, due to the aging process and this atrophy is associated with brown color of the cardiac myocytes leading to brown discoloration of the heart and this is called brown atrophy of the heart microscopically we have accumulation of this granular brown pigment around the nuclei so if you look these are the cardiac myocytes here is the nucleus and you can see this pigment beside the nucleus so i have this perinuclear collection of lip, uh, lipophosphin pigment around the nuclei. So a perinuclear granular brown pigment. If you look at an ultrastructure, these are the uh, Z lines and here you can find the, uh, the muscle fibers. Here we have the nucleus here and you can find the lipophosphin pigment here present a perinuclear location in a perinuclear location. So lipophosphin doesn't, doesn't cause any cell injury. It doesn't cause harm to the cell. The gross picture of the heart that is very small, brown in color with very thin myocardium is called brown atrophy of the heart. Microscopically, we can find the lipophosphin in a perinuclear location as granular brown, brown pigment, and that is also seen by ultrastructure. This is for lipophosphin. So we end with the endogenous pigment and we start to talk about exogenous pigments. Exogenous pigments are pigments coming from outside. How are exogenous pigments introduced into the body? We have inhalation, we have ingestion, and we have inoculation or injection. Inhaled pigment, for example, carbon. Carbon is inhaled from the uh, uh, pollution and so it goes to the, uh, uh, the macrophages in the alveoli, and these alveolar macrophages will eat these 
carbon particles and stay like that in black form so the coal dust inhaled is phagocytized by macrophages and not eliminated and so they stay in the lung tissue giving these black dots in the lung they also these macrophages can go through the lymphatics to the hyalur lymph nodes and so i can find that the hyalur lymph nodes are also black in color due to the deposition of these carbon particles the deposition of carbon particles in the lung and in the hyalur lymph nodes is called anthracosis so this is the exogenous uh, pigment introduced to the body by inhalation which is carb pigments as india ink is introduced into the body here by inject injection so we have inoculation of this pigment by a needle okay and so it is taken up by macrophages present in the skin and stay permanently in the connective tissue like that giving this picture so this is the picture of tattooing injected pigment uh, by a tattooing here to give this kind of exogenous pigmentation the third type of exogenous pigment introduction is by ingestion as in cases of carotene 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 is good for gazer so carotene is uh, another pigment but it is ingested with the المرات so we have exogenous pigments that are uh, uh, introduced into the body by uh, inhalation as carbon in anthracosis uh, by injection or inoculation as in tattooing and by ingestion as in case of carotene this is the summary for pigmentation we have endogenous pigments as lipofuscin breakdown product of lipid peroxidation iron usually due to overload as in hemozydrosis and melanin exogenous indigestible pigments uh, are introduced into the body by inhalation ingestion and inoculation carbon uh, is inhaled in case of anthracosis and india ink is inoculated in case of tattooing look at this match question lipofuscin diabetes mellitus hemolytic anemia hypercholesterolemia chronic venous congestion of the lungs and anthracosis okay try to solve this match question and you will know the answers in the lecture thank you very much